This video is about helping you get the best workflow for hardware MIDI devices. So recording in from a keyboard, editing that MIDI, and then re-recording it as audio and, uh, and being able to hear yourself the entire time. There's a couple different ways to go about this. Let's get into it. So to start off, we've got this project here with just two tracks. The first track is set up to record MIDI only. So recording from my Behringer Poly-D. So the input of this track is Behringer Poly-D. If I right click on the record enable button, I can see that monitor enables it on, record input is on, and again, a MIDI input. The second track is set up a little bit differently. This is set up as an audio track. So it's getting the signal from that device. I've got it set to record disable input monitoring only and input monitoring on. So if I play a key, we see MIDI activity on the first track and audio on the second track. If I record here, it's going to only capture MIDI, but we will hear the synth the entire time. So let's put the metronome on and start recording something. Uh, close enough. So we can definitely truncate that first section and there is the uh, the MIDI pattern. So in the MIDI editor, this is not like a virtual instrument where if you can press a key or you can grab a note and instantly hear it because this is a hardware device. This MIDI is not being sent anywhere yet. So if I want to hear this as I'm editing, I need to create a send. So we can do this in two different ways. The first way is kind of the built-in way that you're supposed to, and I think the, the second way is a little more of a hack. But the first way, you go to your routing window for your selected track, go to the uh, hardware MIDI device, so Behringer Poly-D, and now if I grab a note, I can hear it out of track two as long as that's still record enabled. And so I'll just tighten up this recording a little bit, I was rushing and dragging and not doing a very good job of playing this very simple line, but we'll get there. Okay, I'll just jump ahead to when I've got this quantized. Now let's just fine tune the sound of this. So uh, I'll just loop here and play this back and the synth is still active so we, I can start adjusting the uh, filter in the envelope to get the perfect sound. So that'll work, and now if I want to commit this to audio, all I need to do is come into the second track, right-click on the Record Enable button, and just switch this to Input Mode, and now I can record this as audio. Okay, and then when I'm done, if I'm going to record more on this track, I need to right-click, switch this back to Record Disable, re-enable the first track, and then continue recording. So if I was to record another section, I might run into a little issue here where what I'm playing in on the keyboard obviously goes directly to the synth. It's part of the same device. But it's also coming out USB into the computer being processed by Reaper, sent back out USB back into the same device because we have this hardware send right here. What you're supposed to do is disable it at this stage. So we've we've printed this, moving on to the next section, you actually want to disable this. But there's no quick option for this. And that's why I prefer this second way of setting this up. So instead of using the hardware send from the routing window, we're going to set this up as a plugin. So we're going to go to the plugins menu. We're going to the Cocos folder, and then we're looking for reinsert. Now this plugin is a hardware audio and MIDI loop plugin. This is made for reamping. This is made for running your mix through uh, hardware effects. 
Um, it can also be used for synths to set this up as audio and MIDI on a single track. But I do like this workflow of having the original MIDI and then a second track for audio. We're going to set it up so that there's no MIDI or no audio coming through this track, through track one. But we will send MIDI out from, uh, to the Behringer PolyD. Let's say in this next section, I just want to program something in. Let's let's say a C and then a, and then a D sharp, an E. Yeah, back to D sharp. So because this plugin is active, I can add notes. I can hear them through the synth in real time, uh, coming back on track two. And if I hit record on here, uh, I, I can actually just disable record, enable on that track. This track needs to be set to record input, but then I can record this as audio. And when I'm done with that, I can just shift click on the reinsert uh, when it's embedded in the TCP. If you if you just look for uh, show effects inserts in TCP when size permits. So when this is visible here, shift click will bypass. And so when I play it back, it's not going out of the plugin into the synth and then being processed again, which would double the sound, right? If it's on, is actually being sent twice. And I'll, I'll change the filter here so you can hear both. So you're hearing the original recording as audio, plus the MIDI being sent out into the synth in real time. You can get into some weird situations uh, when you're doing that. So another example is what if this device that we're using doesn't have a keyboard? What if it's a drum machine and you can't play in those notes uh, in real time? So there's there's no uh, MIDI performance to worry about. Actually, the MIDI input doesn't matter here uh, and it doesn't need to be record enabled. So this will just be drums MIDI. And we'll do one more track here with a modern input and set to the same stereo input, the stereo input for my mixer. And this will be drums audio. I'm going to move the reinsert plugin over to this track by holding down the option key and dragging. And I'll just change this output to uh, my drum machine. So if I make a MIDI item here below that other one, if I click here on C1, I can see that and hear it uh, coming out of the mixer. And yeah, I can program a beat here. I didn't like that fill at the end. So there's our drum beat. And if we want to commit this, this is set to record input. We just hit record. So that's it for the tutorial. Hopefully this has been interesting and useful. Uh, hopefully this speeds up your workflow a little bit or gives you some options that you didn't know about. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. Visit reaper.blog for more tutorials.